Hello, welcome and kumusta, and thank you for joining me. Welcome to the podcast OT Conversations. I am your host, Hao. Today, I would like to discuss the professional standards for occupational therapy practice, conduct, and ethics. I have been meaning to have a discussion about this for quite some time because it's quite interesting. For those of you occupational therapists who's working in the United Kingdom, the RCOT or the Royal College of Occupational Therapy put out a publication which is entitled The Professional Standards for Occupational Therapy Practice, Conduct and Ethics. And it is possibly, I can't remember how old this one is, but it was published in 2021, right? And in here, it talks about few things. So there are different sections to it. So if you look at the document, there's obviously the introduction, the uses and the purpose of the document. And then it talks about section three is about principles and standards regarding welfare and autonomy. There's a section four, which is the principles and standards, service provision. Section five, principles and standards about professionalism. And section six, principles and standards regarding the capability and fitness to practice. So if we sum it up, really, there are one, two, three, four sections in the RCOT, Professional Standards of Practice, and that involves welfare and autonomy, service provision. It talks about your professionalism, our professionalism, and our capability to practice. So we're going to go and delve into that. I am more concerned and I'm more interested on the welfare and autonomy, really. Right? At the onset, just by looking at this document, I have... There's nothing ethics in here, isn't it? It's just the professional standards. It delineates a few things. But it doesn't tell you of the ethics itself or the principles and I'm looking at this document now okay let's have a look equality and inclusion collaborative working professional conduct on digital platforms including social media this is messy I can't deal with this okay Cut. This is horrible. I can't find anything relevant on the RCOT guiding principles. Uh, But just to let you know, there are guiding principles for ethical occupational therapy. And the World Federation of OT just did this in April 2024. So the ethical principle involves uh, a few things. And I'm looking at it now. Let's see whether we can make sense. So it's just a very tiny piece of document. So there are ethical principles that people should remember. And I think people have forgotten or have not been reminded to. So occupational therapists, we practice with moral values and beliefs that are shared by a set of foundational ethical principles. So the things that we do as occupational therapists are set on these foundation principles. And what are these? Now, for the World Federation of OT, there are four foundation principles. The first foundation is the principle of beneficence. And what does that mean? This is the obligation of the practitioner to act for the benefit of people receiving occupational therapy services promoting their engagement in daily occupations and addressing barriers that impede their participation. So that is beneficence. Our obligation to act for the benefit of people. Benefit, yeah? The next principle, ethical principle, is non-maleficence. Non-maleficence being the requirement to do no harm by weighing potential harm associated with benefits received from occupational therapy 
while respecting positive risk taking for occupational participation. So your main objective really is to not harm the person, but you have to outweigh. And we have to work with our patients to outweigh and collaborate with patients to make sure that if we're doing our therapy, yes, there may be some pain, but the benefits will outweigh the harm. If the harm is that we're going to be doing will be intense, then let's see if it outweighs it. Yeah. Sometimes when you have to do musculoskeletal therapy or hand therapy, there will be some pain when you have to move the upper limb, when you have to move the arms. And the principle of non-maleficence is stating that your initial intention should at least to do no harm and you have to weigh the potential harm associated with the benefits of having occupational therapy. That is principle number two, non-maleficence. Principle number three for World Federation of OT ethical principle is autonomy. And this is the recognition that people have intrinsic and unconditional worth and the right for self-determination of choices, including those related to occupational therapy goals, participation, and information sharing. Yeah, that's straightforward. So people have intrinsic and unconditional worth. Wow, isn't that a beautiful statement? I like that word, unconditional worth. Yeah, you cannot measure it. Yeah. And this is the principle of autonomy. And then the last principle is the principle of justice. And by this, it meant that there is a need to be fair, equitable, and appropriate treatment of people and avoidance of bias in occupational therapy practice, research, and education. Justice. Very simple in the World Federation of Occupational Therapy when it comes to the ethical principles. A conflict here can occur in the application of ethical principles in OT, for example, for respecting autonomy of the individual while ensuring no harm. And in re responding to such situations, we need to have an appropriately e rigorous ethical deliberation process, and we should be using that. We should have reflection, we should have critical thinking, and we should have collaboration with others who are important in terms of the case so that we can consider the ethical obligations within the context of each situation and the values and beliefs of occupational therapy. Right? So those are the ethical principles. Very straightforward. Just four, guys. Beneficence non-maleficence, autonomy, and justice. And that is coming from the World Federation of Occupational Therapy. Now, the American Occupational Therapy Code of Ethics, on the other hand, and this is 2020, that was published. Okay, let me just warn you, okay? Sometimes when it comes to the United Kingdom and you hear anything else outside the country, you obviously have a blockage, yeah? But what I'm saying is it is important to have a look outside. It is important to have a look at the practice, if not nationally, internationally, so that we can gauge where we are and we can compare where we are in terms of standards and practices, in terms of how we have progressed on how we are progressing our profession. So the principles for the United States or for the American Occupational Therapy Association, on the other hand, there are six. There are six principles as compared to the World Federation of OT. And what are these six principles? Principle number one is the same. It's beneficence. So occupational therapy personnel shall demonstrate a concern for the well-being and safety of people. So principle of beneficence, again, it historically acts as mercy and kindness and charity. So beneficence requires taking action for the benefit of others. In other words, we are promoting good, we are preventing harm, and we are removing harm as well. For example, of beneficence will include 
protecting and defending the rights of others, preventing harm from occurring to others, removing conditions that will cause harm to others, and offering services that benefits for, for people with disabilities and acting to protect and remove persons from dangerous situations. So that is the principle of beneficence. Second principle is the same with, as compared to the World Federation of OT, which is non-maleficence. So by this, it meant that occupational therapy personnel shall refrain from actions that will cause harm. So it's pretty much the same principle. Principle number three is autonomy. OT shall respect the right of people for self-determination, privacy, confidentiality, and consent. So they're autonomous. People are independent. They make choices. They are independent. They are people that decides and that is part of our intervention. Therefore, they need to take part in it. You work with the people. We work with patients. Yeah, it's not just we're prescribing and we're the therapist and we're the boss and we know better. There are other therapists out there, other fields and other professionals that I have been seeing anecdotally. They're acting as if they, they are important. They're very important that they know what's best. And you can clearly see that a good collaboration needs to take place on that one. So autonomy is the third principle. So we respect self-determination, privacy, confidentiality, and consent. Principle four is the same. It's justice. By this, occupational therapy personnel shall promote equity, inclusion, and objectivity in the provision of occupational therapy services. So the principle of justice, it is relating to equitable, appropriate treatment of people, and it relates to being fair. Occupational uh, personnel, therapy personnel, should be demonstrating attitudes and actions of respect, inclusion, impartial, impartiality towards people, groups, and populations with whom we are interacting, regardless of their age, their gender identity, regardless of sexual orientation, race, religion, origin, socioeconomic status degree of their ability, or any other status or attributes. Yeah? That's wonderful because if we are reminded about justice as principle, as our ethical principle, there's no need for any of these inclusion stuff and equality and diversity. There's no need for separate equality and diversity because by having justice as a principle, it already covers all of these things, isn't it? Gender bias, rights of women, what's this? Diversity is not a problem anymore if we remember that we are acting based on the principle of justice. OT, because of justice, by justice, OT shall respect the applicable laws and standards related to our practice. Justice requires impartial consideration and consistent observance of policies to generate unbiased decisions. For example, occupational therapy personnel work to create and uphold society in which all persons have equitable opportunity for inclusion and meaningful occupational engagement as an essential component of their lives. There we go. That is principle number four. It's the same. Beneficence, non-maleficence, autonomy, and justice. By that alone, you uphold the value of an occupational therapy and you should know what to do. But in the United States, there are two other principles and let's explore on this. Principle number five would be the principle of veracity. And by this, it meant that occupational therapy personnel shall provide comprehensive accurate and objective information while representing the profession. So it refers to a comprehensive, accurate, and objective transmission of information and includes fostering understanding of such information. This is based on the virtues of truthfulness, candor, honesty, and respect owed to others. Yeah, veracity is being truthful. 
So when you're communicating with others, OT personnel implicitly promise to be truthful and not deceptive. For example, when you're writing down, when you're entering into a research relationship with the service recipient or research participant uh, or the research participant, they have the right for an accurate information. In addition, any transmission of information must include means to ensure that the recipient or the participant understands the information that's being provided. All right. Simple, beautiful, no need for such an elaborative conversation or statement because it tells you to be truth. Whatever you're writing things down, yeah, principles of truth. Now, principle number six, and this is what I love, yeah, the principle of fidelity. Occupational therapy personnel shall treat clients, either persons, groups, and populations, clients, colleagues, and other professionals with respect, fairness, discretion, and integrity. Okay, this is the principle of fidelity. So the principle of fidelity, it refers to the duty one has to keep a commitment once it has made, right? Do you promise? And also this commitment refers to promises made between yourself and the patients, as well as the maintenance of respectful collegial and organizational relationships. So you need to be respectful of other people and other professionals. Professional relationships are also greatly influenced by the complexity of the environment in which OT personnel shall work. For example, OT personnel should consistently balance their duties of service recipients to to service, to students, research participants, and other professionals, as well as organizations that may influence decision-making and professional practice. Beautiful ethics, beautiful ethical principle. Okay, I love it. It's wonderful. Now, again, in the standards of occupational therapy for occupational therapy practice for the United Kingdom. There is talk about professionalism, which would fall under, if you look at that, then professionalism would fall on what? On fidelity. Yeah. There is a discussion about equality and inclusion. So that would be the principle. Where would that fall under? Veracity. Yeah. So that's the principle of veracity. Professional conduct, it just covers that. Professional conduct would be under the principles, again, veracity and fidelity. All right. Okay, there you go, guys. In this episode, I hope you find that this topic was interesting. So in this episode, particularly, I talked about the principle, ethical principles and compared the two both of which that are straightforward and very clear because they're basing values and attitudes on particular principles. So the two ones that were published by the World Federation of OT, in which case we as occupational therapists in the United Kingdom should also be adhering to is four very essential principles, beneficence, non-maleficence, autonomy, and justice. Yeah, and then the other ones are the principles coming from the United States where there were six principles and that includes, the, in the end, the principle of fidelity and the principle of veracity. Wow, it's a beautiful, simple, straightforward principles that I hope you guys should be adhering to in your practice. I hope you learned a little something today, guys. Until next time, bye.